Welcome to the new Flat Rate Podcast. The new flat rate. A podcast for contractors who need help increasing their service tickets, creating working processes, and building freedom in their lives. In today's episode, we sat down with Colleen Keyworth, the Director of Sales and Marketing for Online Access, to talk about the importance of your company's profile on Google and how much Google helps your company succeed. And now your host, Matt Cope. All right, all right. Hey, there you have it, everybody. Hey, Matt Cope here with a new flat rate uh, here today with Miss Colleen. Uh, and uh, Colleen, you're with a company called Online Access. So why don't you tell us a little bit about who is Colleen and uh, what brings you to the stage today? Well, thanks for having me. My name is Colleen Keyworth. I'm with Online Access. Online Access is a contractor marketing firm. So all we work with is contractors, electrical, HVAC, and plumbing. Uh, we've been in business for about 22 years, family owned and operated. We share um, kind of a, we share a building with our 62 year old family business in contracting and we kind of were born out of the trades to serve the trades. All we deal with is contractor marketing. I run the sales and marketing department for um, the company and what we specialize in is everything from solutions for paid advertising, um, you know, your digital collateral, any of your website designs, um, landing pages, we do social media management, we have chat services, we have review uh, management services and reputation management. So basically we kind of tailor what we do specifically for contractors. We find so many different marketing firms out there are just a one size fits all, whether your doctor's offices or roofers. And yet we have such a unique niche industry. There are some things that just do not work for our, for our um, contractors out there. And a lot of it has to do with being such an undertaker industry. Nobody's really passionate about what we do until it's broken. And so that takes a really different approach sometimes and some strategy. And so that's what we pride ourselves in understanding the business and being able to support other people's businesses. Well, that, that definitely is a breath of fresh air right there, because uh, I know that it's not uncommon for the, the big marketing firms to just want to come in and say, oh, we, we can do this because we're good at marketing. Uh, but yet they don't really uh, understand that sometimes this, this industry might be a little bit different, a little more feast and famine for a lot of companies. And so how is it that online access uh, keeps that... Um, let's just say that that drive to staying on top and then really kind of keeping your finger on the pulse in the industry. Why is it that you're able to specialize in the home service industries? Well, we've always kind of been involved first off at the industry at many levels, not just contracting level. We also make sure we're keeping our eye on our, our basically our finger on the pulse working with wholesalers and OEMs. Um, so we're always as far as part of the conversation, and especially with advocacy too. But in addition to that, for our needs, as far as being involved with the marketing side of things, we involve ourselves in several big SEO groups. So search engine optimization, optimization is a constantly changing field. And because of that, we have to constantly be on top of that by being involved with even think tank groups and forums and getting into some of the people who are working with Google. Because unfortunately, Google doesn't exactly publish a newsletter that says, hey guys, we're gonna make this change just so you know, you have to do this, this, and this to be ahead of it. So it's a lot of A-B testing. It's a lot of being in on the in conversation of those thought leaders in search engine optimization. And so we, we do some um, involvement in some guerrilla groups that do a lot with Google as far as wondering what's gonna happen next in home services, what's going on with Google business profile, what's going on with, um, you know, as far as what search is changing and what little tweak is gonna be made that your business is gonna be thrown to the back of page three. Um, so there's constantly, um, Stuff that we have to keep on top of. I would say that uh, Google in general is probably one of the biggest things that changes more than contracting. Um, not that contracting doesn't have its own technological advancements and marketing is always changing, but it is an exhausting um, you know, task to be able to have to keep up in technology these days. Same thing with web design. Web design is constantly changing. Um, just like we kind of uh, equate this to maintenance, we talk to our clients all the time is we try to get our clients on a schedule so that they're updating their site on a, like an 18 month to two year basis, because just like, um, you know, your furnace maintenance or your air conditioning maintenance, your website needs the same thing. And there has to be an all out refresh of new code, um, new practices, page speed add-ons, uh, efficiencies, um, things that we have to do to our customers all the time to make sure that they're constantly being updated. Because if you're sitting on the same site for even more than 18 months, you're already old. Um, there's, there's stuff that's constantly changing on that. And I feel like a lot of contractors kind of don't think about that as a actual, you know, thing that they have to keep on the top of mind. 
But yeah, no, it's it's one of those things that having our own company in our backyard or basically out the back door um, is is kind of one of those things that you, we understand the realities and the challenges as far as um, I would say the biggest challenge is like how you're staffed, how you're running your business, what your priorities are. And most contractors would rather fix, you know, an AC and actually get their hands dirty in the field than have to ever want to unravel digital marketing. And um, we attempt to make sure we break that down and keep it very simple as far as, you know, being able to follow it and be able to make the decisions you need to make without having to absolutely overwhelm yourself. Um, and so that's kind of one of the things. But the also is that we're very weather driven and it's a very fickle industry as far as seasons. And so that's also something that we have to face um, when we're talking about search and we're talking about performance and there's things that we have to plan for for that that's a little different than other people's industries. So. I would, I would agree with that. And, and, you know, that's interesting. Every 18 months, I would say that the majority of us have failed miserably at updating our websites uh, that <laughs> often, uh, just because you get busy with other things. And you're right, it's, you, you just don't think about it, do you? And so it's there. Now, you mentioned something as you were going through there, you were talking about uh, Google business profiles, um, you know, just looking at uh, at, at the contractors, I, I think that that's a, another thing that our industry is probably not the best at is understanding even some of those things that you just said. And so what is the relevance to, uh, to these members to have a, a positive Google business profile? It's massive. Coming from a website company myself, I will tell you that Google business profile or GMB or Google My Business um, as it formerly was known, it actually makes up for huge amounts of your traffic. It cannibalizes your website traffic every day. And you would be surprised if you see how many people don't even make it to your website before they just call using GMB. If you think about how yourself as a consumer uses Google and they, you just look for something, maybe it's the familiar, maybe it's just a keyword you're looking for. Maybe it's a restaurant, maybe it's a hairdresser, whatever it is, you're constantly just going to that Google listing and you're finding that phone number, you see that star rating, you have the information, what you need, maybe some pictures that catch your interest. You're like, okay, that's what I want to do. And you dial. And Google, uh, Google Business Profile gives you that stats every month. And you can see how much your web traffic isn't even make it through your website before they get onto your GP, or G, uh, GBP. I know it's like so weird being able to switch that up after it's been GMB for how long. Um, but with that, there was new changes this year with Google Business Profile. And that was they took away the app. You have to make all your changes you know, within the listing. Um, you can log into your Google account and do that. Um, they, they did update how they're doing some of the reviews, where they're showing them. They're doing new things with Google Guaranteed. So when you thought Google Guaranteed was just for Google local service users, now it's coming into the Google business profile. And so Google will do anything to make it, to make it dime, let's be honest. So of course, when it comes to what's that extra sugar and spice that you need, I kind of relate it to the Dr. Seuss's story of the sneeches. And so it's like, you know, the one star was great. Okay, then the two star ones came out and you pay more and more to be able to be that next level. And Google, um, Google verified, um, and Google guaranteed verified is going to be a status that you can purchase on your Google business profile. And it might cost you $50 a month, it might cost you whatever, but you go through all the Pinkerton checks and everything like that. And then Google says, great, these are a Google verified business, which they have extra sugar and spice and we'll give you a, you know, guarantee experience. Um, but because they paid. Oh yeah, because you paid, exactly. And, and that's where it's, it's a racket, but you know, it's always Google's MO. Um, the other thing is like Google business profile, it really can be all that more. People sometimes neglect it. And I will say it's free, well, unless you're doing the paid stuff, but for the most part, it's free. And so much of it is crowdsourced. You really have to be uh, vigilant when it comes to making sure your address is correct, making sure your phone number is correct. If you're using tracking, making sure that that's set up correctly. If you have your photos on there, are, are people crowdsourcing your listing with photos that are, um, you know, that are not the best representation of your company? I mean, mm -hmm. that's huge because that, again, is those pressure impressions. Um, Google went, already, went out and said that listings with photos actually get interacted with five times more because people want to just scroll through there. They want to see an impression of your business, know what you do. And like, get if you think about picking a restaurant, people just want to see what the restaurant looks like. If you're picking a contractor, I just want to see that you do what I need you to do. It's examples of good work and you have a great smiling team or a good recognizable logo or truck. 
So these are things to be diligent about. Plus you have your reviews and you should be using some sort of system to collect Google reviews. But then in addition to that, you should be responding to your Google reviews and using those opportunities to say thank you or be responsive to your guests, but then also with negative reviews, making sure that you're keeping on top of your reputation. Um, questions and answers. People don't think of that as a place that you can use um, to be able to promote your business. In the Q&A section, you can pre-qualify your questions. Think about things that you get asked all the time as a business. I mean, online access, we get asked constantly, are you an internet service provider? And we have to actually, we actually went into there and we are not an internet service provider. Uh, you know, we're a website company. And so it's, it's just a name schematics thing, but basically here in Port Huron, people think that we're like Comcast or something. Sure. So <laughs> you can pre-populate your own questions and answers to kind of get people going or thinking or are kind of, you know, preemptively put in what your hours are. If you run emergency service, you know, things that people wouldn't know. Do you have duck cleaning? You know, all these different services. Um, there is, there's a lot of tools in that. And unfortunately, it's one of those things that people kind of keep as a, as a side thing, like, oh, I got one, but I don't really pay attention to it on like a monthly basis. I see the reviews that come in and I like it. But what are you doing to proactively at least add one or two things to your account on a monthly basis? Even if it's adding a photo, even if it's updating something or, or making sure, um, I would be careful about necessarily messing with your actual verbiage on things or your name or your services because Google has come out with kind of its new bot system for checking these things. And we ran into, and I know other companies did too, um, issues where anything that was updated went through this review process and listing the accounts were suspended for three weeks at a time because that's how long it took Google to get a human set of eyes on them to actually review them. So, mm. you know, adding pictures and everything is great, monitoring your views and responding to them. But if you're gonna change any of your core services, your name, address, phone number, Make sure you're very careful and very deliberate on when you do that and work with your digital partner to do that because it can be something that can turn off your listing and, and that is not something you want in the middle of July for three weeks. Yeah, no, not at all. You know, and you mentioned something there that I think I'm very guilty of, you know, uh, our, our members that we appreciate and we love, uh, they'll leave us a great review. And a lot of times I'll just click like. Uh, and, <laughs> we all do that, I think. It's like, like, hey, you know, shows them, shows them that we liked it and we appreciate it. But, uh, you know, why is it important that we respond to them? What, what has been the effect of um, putting a response and, and saying, hey, thank you so much for your review or even responding to the negative ones? So responses in general are never for the individual that you're responding to. Just as a general rule, anytime you're responding, responding reviews, don't be wrong, it's a bonus or side effect of that. But in general, they're for everybody who is browsing your listing and wanting to know more about you, especially mm -hmm. for those negative reviews. So first off, being a responsive company in general, whether it's good, bad, or, or ugly that you're responding to, is a good indicator to Google that first off, you're actively engaged in your listing and that you know, you're a company that's actually you know, putting forth an effort. So that first and foremost does help because Google still looks at those responses. Um, I would go as far and I would recommend nobody abuses this, but they do look at the keywords and reviews too. And right. so when you have keywords and reviews that can help your listing surface more as well, or just have being active in that. Um, responses for negative reviews, especially, it's kind of like you're put up on that stage and they say, all right, here is the tough, tough question. Here's the bad, here's the ugly. How do you handle yourself as a business? You mm -hmm. could have the worst customer in the world and you could call them everything, but you know, <laughs> everything, but but uh, good. And basically the thing is, is that that's internal and it should always be internal. And even the, the full resolution of that particular problem should remain internal. Um, mm -hmm. At all costs, your response on a public level, especially in your Google listing, should be professional, apologetic, um, you know, as far as, you know, you could, you could reference things like, you know, we'll definitely talk offline or, you know, we, we put calls into your office and, and you will definitely meet up on this or something like that to get a resolution. <clears throat> But then as far as the actual, you know, what you did to resolve that problem, again, that should always be a personal conversation never taken online. People get hot online and I, we have had so many different contractors we work with that um, one, of our, one of our legendary ones would always write the responses. Oh gosh, he was so good at writing Google responses. They were epic. He would use terms like douche lobster and like <laughs> just everything, but, but that was completely inappropriate. And so he would give us the first draft. We had got him into the habit of doing that. So he wouldn't like sink his entire Google. Yeah. <laughs> on the fact that he was just too, too hot really to answer. Yeah. 
So then he'd send us the first draft. We'd be able to write up the second draft and make that appropriate to be able to send. And then he would be able to take the conversation offline. But it is a big deal. And you got to take the emotion out of it because everybody takes it super personally. And you know, most of the time, the customer is absolutely wrong. Sure. But people reading your account, they are the people that you're trying to impress. It's the next customer. And at right. that point, they're never going to side with you being the man. And so you have to handle yourself with professionalism and a little bit of grace. And that's who you're trying to impress, not the person that you're going to deal with offline. Oh, man, but that's no fun. Goodness. <laughs> no justice. Nobody <laughs> wins when you fight on the Internet. Just saying. <laughs> they really don't. They really don't. You know, well, that's definitely good advice. So thank you for that advice for everybody. Uh, you know, that that kind of spawns into a different course because we talked about uh, a little bit about how, uh, you know, sometimes calling in this industry of home services, the weather isn't on our side, whether they're an electrical company that uh, gets busy after a storm or a heating and air conditioning company that gets busy when it's 100 degrees or a plumbing company that gets busy when it freezes. Uh, whatever it is, you know, there's these, these times when we've got all the work we can possibly use. But for many of our members, especially the smaller ones, especially the ones that don't have a full-time marketing person on staff or don't have a full-time company like yourself uh, take care of their stuff for them, uh, all of a sudden it's like they're really, really, really busy and then the light switch uh, flips and everything just stops. And I know you've seen this time and time again when, when they just go from a million miles an hour to zero uh, just overnight. And, and so many of these companies, they run into some problems that we see where, where they just, first of all, take a breath. They take a breath because they're tired because they've been running a million miles an hour. So they're like, oh, well, we don't have any work today. Well, I guess we're going to go fishing, you know. And that's fine to take that, you know, to, to take a break from business and to take a day or two off now and then is always a good thing. However, uh, so many of them fall into this trap of just waiting and just thinking, oh, well, now we just got to wait for the weather. And then they start, you know, complaining that they don't have any business and they got to even lay off people. And so what would be your advice on, on what, what can these companies do? Uh, kind of proactively to start helping their company kind of build a bridge over these valleys that they run through on an annual basis. So this is tales all this time. <laughs> and I, a lot of, a lot of our clients actually um, it's, it happens all the time, even, even with a full service marketing company, it's a lot of it is, is pro boils down to like one word. And I know that you've probably heard this word before, but a lot of it's consistency. So much of the contractor MO, and I would say we're all guilty of it at some point, is knee-jerk reaction. It's reactive marketing. It's reactive to something you're doing rather than being consistent with what you're doing or planning ahead. Because when the when the giving's good, it's great. You're so busy you can't even, you know, breathe because of course the schedule's just going up. You're fold out two weeks. And then suddenly that starts tapering off. And then the panic sets in. And you're like, wait a minute, I got guys that are coming in. They don't have any work. And, and, and we're, we're just so busy and now, now what's going on. And then you're calling up your marketing company and you're just like, what the heck? My phone's not ringing. What's going on? It must be Google. And it's like, well, there's, there's two things here. Definitely there's things as far as like, you know, you got to know where the rest of your competition is because weather can play a huge factor. Um, second, if, if it is 76 degrees outside and it is August, maybe it's September, like right now. And you know, as a homeowner, my favorite thing to do is not have to pay for a system replacement or repair. And so I know that fall, especially for the Midwest for us, is coming around the corner. And sure. it's only 70 degrees out yet. I'm not really needing my air condition so much. And like, I'm not really, it's not my priority. I just have to survive the next couple of weeks, right? So right. there's a mentality there because unfortunately nobody has that rainy day jar for, oh my gosh, I need a new system replacement. No, it's, it's right there next to my trip to Paris jar. No, <laughs> it doesn't happen. And yet we all take ourselves out of that mentality. And we're just like, I don't know, people aren't calling us. It must be, you know, our fault, you know, something's not happening. There's no need, but they're also not a demand. And I think sometimes you have to create that demand though too. And that's where some of that bridge comes in because you know what the innate need to just, oh, I need AC or, oh, I need heat. That is very weather driven most of the time. 
There are very but, few people that expend all income that are like, I just need to upgrade my system because I want all the bells and whistles and the new thermostats. I'm going to be eco-conscious and I'm going to have a green energy footprint. How many of your customers are actually making up that, that mentality? Very few. Not mm -hmm. saying that it, they're not out there. There are those eccentric millionaires that want all the bells and whistles. But I mean, like, we're happy when those people land in our lap. But our main customer, it is not their favorite thing. And right. so what are you doing to cultivate that need? And it's not a knee jerk reaction. A lot of it's consistency with what you have been doing to fence in your herd, first and foremost, and to make sure your messaging is clear and your other services. It is so much easier to sell your existing client base than it is to start brand new and just try to look for those customers that haven't seen you before and create that new, that new, um, that new relationship. And so if you already have people that have gone through the replacement cycle with you, um, that have gone through any of the repairs and stuff like that, there are so many other services or side things that you're doing. Um, also, it's about capacity. Like if you're planning your maintenance for the time that you're still busy, making sure you're pushing it to the non-busy times really helps keep your guys in the field. Number right. two, what are you doing to show off things like, uh, do you do blower door testing or insulation or do you do duct cleaning or do you offer, uh, you know, uh, water heater inspection services or plumbing whole home inspections or what are you doing to say, hey, we have an IAQ special that we're running or things that are those subsidiary services that you run that also pay the bills. Because right. those are times that it's easy to upsell those in the field sometimes because you're right in front of them, but like maybe that was the first impression. Maybe it's that second touch later that you're able to hit them again with maybe a text message reminder, or you have your email marketing campaign that you're going out. And I'm not saying you just start immediately as the phone, phone slow down, that you just start emailing people, or you just start calling people, or if you just start texting. There's a lot of it that comes into, have you consistently been doing that as part of keeping them informed as part of your club or part of your members, or just saying, hey, we're here for you. And so much is that knee jerk. And it really does, um, it doesn't always go well. I mean, everybody will throw something into the market and it takes a couple of weeks. It's like, well, if you're the not the familiar guy and I have a postcard in front of me and I don't recognize you really, like, why, what, what have you done the last five months before right. it got slow to break that barrier down first? That's uh, a great point there because, <laughs> I mean, holy cow, you know, like in the world of air conditioning, especially, I know that as soon as it gets a little bit cooler like this, my mailbox will fill up with uh, all kinds of ads, you know, everybody will send out their tune up letters or whatever, yeah. but they always, they always wait and I, I, looking back, I can't recall that I got any from of them from them when it was 100 degrees out. Right. Yeah. And it's so there should be a lot of the time sticking with your, your plan. It's not just a switch that you turn on and off. Yeah. There should have been one that said winter is coming or fall is coming. <laughs> See, yeah. I think that'd be a brilliant one. Winter is coming. Send that in like, you know, August even and have exactly. that gear up so that you're filling up that fall special. And if you book before now, we'll get you in and we'll guarantee that you get this extra inspection with that. Mm -hmm. But what are you doing to add value to that and let your customers know there's other things too as far as what are you doing with additional marketing pieces? And we can go into like community stuff. We can go into like the gorilla marketing you're doing. How are you managing and things like your stickers and your yard signs and stuff? So many people want to throw up and say, well, I just paid Google and that's the only marketing I'm going to do. And that kills uh, me inside. I swear a marketer dies every day. Um, yeah. It's just because it's like, now we're fighting being like, well, hey, well, what else are you doing? And they're like, well, nothing. All I do is pay Google. Well, guess what? The harsh reality is as soon as you're done paying Google, everything that you've had out there goes away. There's no yeah. residual benefit whatsoever. And yet so many contractors, especially they just want that turnkey silver bullet, but they don't want to put in the work. And it's the work of it is still planning out what your mail campaigns are. Mail's not dead. Planning yeah. out your email campaigns. Email's not dead. Your yeah. yard signs, your stickers. What are you doing for some referral bonuses, even from existing customers? Do you have a referral program? Um, yeah. What are you doing to do your social media to complement everything that you're doing on the ground? And so a lot of it's some of that stuff that contractors don't want to hear. I talked with a guy a couple weeks ago who was like, well, I need the phones to ring and I need, I need a new marketing company. And I'm like, all right, well, what are you doing right now? And he's like, we're just paying Google. You know, we can just do pay, 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 uh, PPC. That's all we're doing. And I was like, there's nothing else. Well, we don't have any kind of yard signs. We don't have any stickers. We don't do any of the community marketing. We don't do any um, referral program. We don't have a maintenance club. Oh, that was a good one. We don't have anything. And I was just like, well, you're going to have to start with that. But everybody wants the immediate results. And yet when you build that strong foundation, think of every big company that you've ever wanted to grow up to be like, you don't sure. think that they don't ever have any of that stuff going for them, but it doesn't well, suddenly. 
And we all think that they just started out that big oh, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like they just turned on Google and they were an overnight like, success. Damn. I had a million yeah. dollars to spend on Google, so I'm an overnight sensation. No, right. there's a lot more to it psychologically, even from a customer standpoint of, do I recognize you? Are you big enough to handle my need? Is there yep. stuff here that makes you legit as far as being my number one choice? Because I already see you around my neighborhood. I already see your right. yards. I already have that brand familiarity and that comfort level of seeing some of the stuff you do on Facebook to make me choose you over the next guy. No, and that may, that makes so much sense. And uh, I hope that everybody's get, uh, getting what Colleen's talking about here, uh, which is about if, you know, Google essentially is a, is a great platform. There's a lot of good stuff on there for you, for sure, uh, especially in today's world. But the thing is, is it's kind of like one billboard. Mm -hmm. And if you only have one billboard and you don't have anything else, then you're banking on the fact that they'll all see that one and that that's enough and so at the end of the day if you think of the most successful companies out there they're kind of they, they kind of trickle out in a lot of different platforms and you know you mentioned things like uh mail is not dead you know there's so many companies now that don't send out postcards colleen and i think it's because we've just gotten lazy it's because turning on google is easier uh, it's just you, that we think that it's just quick. But when we skip things like mail and we skip things like emailing our existing customers that have bought like bronze and higher from us in the past to keep them engaged, then if we're not doing that stuff, then when they go to, to Google to find a company, they might not remember who was there. And, and we don't always realize that, that yes, they might have went to Google to get your phone number today. But why did they pick your phone number over somebody else's? Because um, it, it's amazing. It's like I, I've got this other company that I, I work with on a, a regular basis. I've been coaching with for years that uh, it's funny because he rebranded his company uh, years ago, like like years ago. And the brand was good. Uh, but but I'm talking like 10 years ago, Colleen, he rebranded his company and changed the name uh, and, and all this stuff. But every time I go out and my team goes out and does ride alongs with them to their customers, when it comes time for them to write the check, the customers always ask if they should make the check out to his old name. And it's like 10 years ago, he rebranded this thing and nobody ever asks if they make the check out to that. <laughs> And, and it's just kind of funny that, you know, because this company had been in business for, for 20, 30 years. And, and what happened is over the course of that time, uh, they really did all of that stuff you're talking about. They, they stickered the crap out of the community. They, they, they had the signs and the postcards and the, uh, and the uh, newsletters and things of that nature. But I guarantee and so, it wasn't a flash in the pan, though, because no. that's, that's the key. Is everybody yeah. like, well, it didn't work. I had it up for 30 days and it didn't work. I had put my yeah. first mailing out and it didn't work. And I was like, if you don't have consistency, you mentioned the billboards earlier, that's a campaign. You don't just oh, yeah. you have co-op money. Oh, I have to spend my co-op money. It's the end of the year. I have to, I have to put trains logo on it. I have to put Goodman's logo on it. I just throw something up there. And I don't think that got me any returns. Yeah, it what doesn't. What are you doing to, to keep that story? Like use your billboards as like a story that you're building and have something different every month. Welcome to Storytime with TNFR. Today's story is about a contractor who found he no longer needed to sacrifice his integrity over his great craftsmanship after signing up with the new flat rate. Check it out. Being able to have integrity in what you do was just mind blowing for me because I, I, I was getting to the point where I thought it was either or. It allows you to be really good craftsmen, you know, actually do your job well, but make money at it yeah. and take really good care of your customer. Moving forward on that, when we look at these companies that are, are doing, you know, it, it doesn't really matter what size they are. I, I think that there's a minimum amount of money that every company should be setting aside, like on a percentage basis. If they don't do any marketing today, they need to be setting aside at least this month to start planning out this roadmap. Uh, that's going to allow them to start this consistent branding that's going to help people recognize them if Google crashes tomorrow. And so what do you have, what, what do you think about that? Is there a, a golden number that they could know that they could start with if they're doing nothing today? 
that's a hard one and it usually is a percentage um and it's something yeah. that you already have to and this is probably the biggest problem we have across the board which is why we love the new flat rate so much is pricing in general because so many people are not pricing into what they need to be charging for their jobs to be able to cover their marketing costs that is so much part of their overhead and their you know return client system and yet we don't even think about it as one of our things that we have to plan for um, and so well, then markets. before you answer, then let's let's mention that because the new flat rate we since we control uh, a lot of their pricing and things like that, just a note to everybody that that when Colleen talks to us here about how much money you should be setting aside on a percentage basis, uh, we can build that into your pricing ahead of time. And so right. we can we can adjust your 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 pricing up, and if it only moves a certain percentage, it's not like it's going to add a million dollars, you know, to every task, and so your customers are going to run away. Uh, and, and so let's look at kind of the stair steps here. If they were going to have to increase their pricing to be able to afford marketing to combat what the changes are in the world right now, what would you make recommendations for? I, it depends on the market. So as far as I'm, I'm going to be quoted on this, right? So it really depends. So when we build out stuff, some of the aggressive numbers that we hear, depending on how aggressive you want to be, it's usually somewhere around 20% of what your budget is, is pushed into marketing, but you can build it up or, or build it down. But again, the cost of radio space here in Port Huron, Michigan, first the cost in Atlanta, Georgia are, are light years apart, right? right. Of course, what, what, but of course your billable hour and your ticket pricing for what your job is should be light years of well, you know, at least at least adjust for those cost of living expenses and the fact that you're paying for marketing that's going to be X amount of dollars. Um, now so you just different. mentioned you just mentioned a number that was really big though. You said 20% of your budget, but what do you mean by that? What's what 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 budget are you talking about? So, like as you're talking about all your sales and what you're projected to do, and you're getting into what you want to plan to do for the next year and, and what you want to grow to. So like, if you sit down at the end of the year, imagine you're having your, your planning meeting and you're going into, we want to grow by X amount. Maybe you want to grow by, you know, 30, 40%. Maybe you want to grow by another million, whatever it is that you want to do. You have to plan accordingly how much of your money that you're going to put back into marketing and where that budget's going to be spent. And so you can also take into account how much co-op do you have for how much sales you're going to do. If you're going to do X amount of volume with your wholesaler, they're going to give you X amount of co-op. Maybe that supplements some of that and you add that in addition to what you're collecting for that marketing budget. So it's all relative. I can, you know, as far as, you know, specific examples, but let's say I want to set aside, I don't know, uh, you know, $200,000 just for a billboard campaign, your radio, you have your pay-per-click advertising that you want to do. Maybe you're going to do some community engagement stuff and you're doing some big parades or something. Are you going to be doing um, any that maybe that's your entire year's budget on that. So like mm -hmm. now I'm going to be able to have to spend that in different buckets and maybe my wholesaler is going to compliment me with some more stuff and I'm going to get some more co-op money on top of that. But people are so afraid to spend. It sometimes takes the courage to put into it. And so many times I would say the majority of, especially the guys that we work with don't even want to touch that. And yet they'll throw money at pay-per-click. Like it's no big deal because they want to be aggressive with it, but it's a flash in the pan. And yet you don't want to spend that on things like a mailer or email marketing campaign, which doesn't really cost that much. Honestly, if you, it's just the consistency right. to do it. Uh, if you have some, I always tell, and I, I know everybody's like, I'm not a full-time marketer, but I'm a broken record here. Anybody who's listened to anything I've ever been on always hears this. Find somebody in your neighborhood, your office, your, your whatever, find somebody part-time. I don't care. I don't care if it's a sister's uncle's kids, ne nephew's niece, whatever that just got out of college and they know everything right now, because of course they just got out of college. So of course they know everything. Um, so while they know everything, you know, or while they're out of high school and they know everything, you need somebody that's able to do the extra stuff, the boots on the ground stuff, whether it's your Facebook advertising, you want to start putting aside maybe $500 a month where you're doing some pushed ads on that, or maybe some, um, you know, offers. Um, are you doing some recruiting ads? Is there somebody who's actually going to be taking care of that? So we're, if you're working with a digital company for your social media, they're able to be that point person. So I can guarantee you anytime it's the owner, it fails because mm -hmm. the owner always is way too busy to be able to get involved in some of that decision-making and it's not their priority. Not that we don't love you guys to death, but you don't want to do it. And so is there a point person in your office that actually is going to get that picture that we need or is going to actually help plan for what that ad is or write that collateral or give us what you need? And it's not from the owner. The owner never gets that. Um, same thing with any of your planning for your, if you're going to do a newsletter, if you're going to do email marketing, email marketing is so easy to set up in house. You just have to have somebody who is literally, that's their job. 
Like right. using constant contact or MailChimp or maybe partners that you have that have those services for you. Again, you just curate your, your, your list. So many people don't talk to their maintenance customers until it's time for their maintenance. Why? They're already on your hook. They're the people that have already invested in you and say, you're my guy. What are you right. doing for me lately? What are you doing to build that bridge? What are you doing to have that relationship? Um, is there a newsletter? Is there an offer? Is there a special event that you have for a customer appreciation or anything like that? And who's in charge of making sure that that happens? Because the favorite thing is that contractors that I work with a lot, they have the best intentions, and the best ideas, but it's always an afterthought. They'll get up to the mark and they'll be like, oh, we should have posted about that. Oh, we probably should have done that. Oh, I wanted to do that. And yet it's always the actionable plan of how to do that and be proactive about it. That seems to be the barrier half the time. And right. whether that's working with your marketing company or having somebody in your office that you can pass that idea to, and then they work with your marketing company, that's half the battle. Because as a marketing company, I can't guess what you want. Right. So as far as your number, I probably got off track on that. It, it really depends on how aggressive your goals want to be. And if you are expecting to have some serious growth, you need to be making some serious money and putting that towards your marketing and mm -hmm. being able to plan a budget and, and stick with it. Like if you're going to make a huge commercial and you're going to, you know, going to run that, you're going to do some maybe serious airtime, find out what your costs are. If you want to do some Spotify ads, um, you know, like those are the kind of things. Don't just do it one month and say, oh, I don't really think it worked for us. Track what you're doing, especially when you're dropping banks like this. A lot of people keep that as the afterthought and they send everybody to the homepage. I do not recommend when you're spending that much money on advertising, OTT, as Spotify, as whatever it is that you're doing, that you ever send people just to your homepage. Find a special landing page, get a special phone number, make sure you're inspecting what you're expecting and you're able to quantify, well, we ran this for three months for the first quarter. We got X amount of calls. These are the ones that converted into leads and this is what it cost us to run that. And this is what it cost us that we got out of jobs out of it. Because by the time you get to your next year, you know what works and you know what doesn't. That's important is you end up seeing your return on investment. Uh, you know, I was reading a book recently. Um, it's a business development book, but he's he's a marketing guy as well, and and he talks about marketing as a machine. Uh, it's it's almost like a, a money exchange machine that if you put one dollar in it, a different quantity comes out. You know, and so the goal is always to put in one dollar and get as many dollars back as you possibly can. But but what you're saying right there, Colleen, what I'm hearing you say is that when you track these things, then it tells you how much money you got back. Yeah. And so you can get that exchange rate, whether you're getting eight dollars back for every one or whether you're getting fifty dollars back for every one. And, and whichever way that you've got that that's working the best, you definitely need to to ramp that up. Because the more dollars you put in it, the more that you're going to get back. Well, part of it is your call taking. And I know this doesn't necessarily get into my house or really your, your real house necessarily, but we have other partners and stuff. But we find so many times when we listen to leads that come in or we listen to how they're handled, um, so many contractors don't realize that they have a gaping black hole sitting right up in their CSR front office. Oh, yeah. And, and where it's just fallen right through the floor. And it's, it's, you don't think it, you don't assume that, right? Because, oh, they answer the phone, they book the call. And yet when you actually listen to some of these calls that are coming into your office, it's a life-changing experience. They and answer the phone. Every... <laughs> what? What do you want? <laughs> or you're like, I'm sorry, we're just too full right now. You're gonna have to call somebody else. And you're just like dying inside. Yeah. You're just like, no, that couldn't have happened to me. That's not my office. That's not right. my people, but you'll be surprised. And like yeah. how many times we have to come back and be like, you paid $140 for that lead. Yep. And then it went to the trash yep. instead of trying to save it because they'll come back and they'll say, well, we spent this much money. Nothing came in. Well, funny, you got 32 phone calls off of sending that and you only booked 14 of them. Yeah. Well, and, and not only only booked them, you don't even know anything about the ones that you didn't book. You didn't right. know whether they were a great candidate or they weren't many times. You know, it's so so common for uh, companies on that CSR side and the, the dispatch side to just take calls as they come and they just, they miss out on some really, really, really great ones. Or you put uh, it to an answering service and it's like, if you're spending that much to make the phone ring and it's going to an answering service, I... It, it's it's almost like unavoidable because you don't get that. Like, I want that service now. I clicked on you now. If I'm grabbing a, an ad at the top of Google right now, it must be because I'm I'm at this point, like I have busted system. I have a need. And so the first person that answers the phone that's a real person is the person I'm going to go with. 
Well, that's a that's a good point. And and you know, with what a lot of companies spend on answering services and stuff too, they some of them could have a after hours person that just answers the phone yeah. because there's not that many calls that always come in after hours anyway. So <laughs> Well, anyway, well, so, okay, so, so this is great information. So thank you for that. So be consistent with your marketing is the message, but let's go back to, to what some of the uh, members are, are saying here, Colleen, uh, about um, other issues that they're having that uh, maybe their marketing company, uh, like online access, well, can help with. And, and some of that would be like, hey, Colleen, I'm really struggling uh, finding people to work for me right now. Uh, to work in the company and to build the team. Uh, maybe they have enough leads for customers, but they don't have enough warm bodies to support. Uh, what, do you, what could you help them with there? Well, um, first and foremost, having, um, you know, being able to show off your culture is a big thing. We are facing right now one of the weirdest groups of individuals, I would say personally, um, that are in the market for jobs, as it were. And so you got two cases here. You have the, the new people, you have the Generation Zs and maybe some of the, the younger millennials that are coming in there in the workforce that you're hiring right now. And maybe you have the veterans, maybe you have people who are maybe elder millennials, Generation Xers, and maybe even some boomers that you're hiring right now. Now, mm -hmm. there's two different camps there. Number one, the build your own course is kind of my favorite because what, what for my own experience, sometimes strays are strays for a reason. And sometimes a lot of those veterans and a lot of those ones that those of like those dream people, like when a plumber walks to your doorstep and says, I need a job. And you're thinking, gosh, my unicorn finally came to me. And then you realize <laughs> six months into it that this relationship is costing you more money than it would have been for you to invest in a brand new person and train them up to your culture and your sure. expectations and your standards. Um, so there's two things, like I said, to consider there. So a lot of a lot of companies that we work with, and I'm sure you find the same at work more into the build your own method. And it can be costly either way, and it's not always a sure system, but there is definitely a guarantee that they're going to come up with the right habits. They're going to be part of the culture. They're not going to bring their own culture into it. They're not going to come with nasty habits or anything like that, um, but it does take time. And you're also appealing to an individual. So many times we forget to update, I'm going to say it again, our websites. And people think of it as this billboard that just sits there. And yet any individual, especially in this younger age group, that is worth their time, that is looking into your company or considering your company, maybe they saw you on Indeed, maybe you're doing all that zip recruiter stuff, maybe a recruiter, they're still finding you on Facebook, LinkedIn, and your website, and they're still trolling through your stuff. And they're, what are they going to find? If I have no impression of your company, other than I know that you're heating and cooling contractor, and I'm going to your website, and I'm going to your social media, what impression am I going to have? You know, I just had a had a vision when you were talking about that of again an, a billboard, but a, a billboard. If you, you see a billboard on the side of the road and it's been there for a year or two years or three years with the same picture on it, that picture starts looking really old pretty quick. You know, it really starts wearing out. And I am seeing that that's what you're saying about this website thing and all your social media is that it's it's obvious, especially to these people that we're recruiting today that are sitting there comparing us with all these other companies online. It's obvious which one, which companies are the go-getter companies, are the ones with opportunity as they would see it, uh, based on something as simple as that of, of do you have somebody that's keeping up? Everything. Absolutely. Yeah. But like, um, and I know everybody's like, oh, you're just giving us the boring stuff, Colleen. And I'm like, well, think about it. If you compare yourself to some of those big heavy hitters out there, what do they have in common? They've got the basics down. And so many times we want to skip the basics. Yeah. We want to skip the basics and go right to that silver bullet. And it's like, if you don't have any of that stuff in place and it's the easy stuff, it's the, yeah. it's the have, you know, pictures of your current culture. Don't use too many stock photos, have pictures of your people, your trucks. Do you have a meet our team page? Um, are you actually posting on your Facebook consistently or is the last post on there from Christmas of last year? Are the lights on in somebody's home? Is there a page that you have for your ads? If you're running things in LinkedIn or Indeed, or if you're doing stuff, do you actually have a page that goes to your website that lists your culture, the benefits, maybe has a fast form on it, maybe has pictures of some of the last time you did your Christmas party or you had your company outing, things that you want people to identify with, like this is a good group to work for. This is a good group I want to align myself with. And yet we take for granted all of that stuff. And yet we work with a generation that lives off of their phone. And so mm -hmm. they're doing their own research and everything like that. And they're doing their own due diligence. And yet you need to figure out what collateral you have as a company 
that is your impression because that's what you're fighting against is which one looks more thin. It's not just about the money. Um, now money is a huge part of it, obviously make sure you know, you have what your benefits and your, your, you know, whether your, your costs, what you're looking for, your positions and stuff, but the whole package really is, are you building a culture that somebody wants to align themselves with? Are you building that picture? Because then what happens is also when you start getting yourself involved in the community, you start giving your, getting yourself involved locally and stuff, people start becoming your raving fans and they'll send you people and people want to work for your business as well. A lot of this is long-term, but it should be complementing what you're already doing. If you're running Indeed ads, if you're doing Facebook hiring ads, don't just use Facebook's hiring algorithm. Use your own ads too so that your team can share them. Also use your own ads so that you can send them to your Facebook or your website because your website should be the portal that somebody could look at your company and say, that's what they do. Here's who they are. This is what they believe in. Hmm. That's excellent advice. And I can see there's a lot of uh, buckets that are leaking out there uh, for many of our members right now on, on all of that info. And, 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 you know, one thing that you mentioned is just, hey, hiring somebody uh, to do it, to, to get that information to the marketing companies and stuff is, is really good advice too. Uh, and, and, you know, my, uh, I've got a, a colleague, a guy named Michael McCallowix, uh, the author of a book called Profit First, if you haven't read it, uh, that I was talking to about that at one point. And, he actually recommended uh, hiring a lot of the people in today's society part time. He said that uh, he hires for um, what do you how do you put it? He hires for lifestyle, not money. And so he's about, hey, you know what? Do you want a part time job between ten and two uh, just to fit into the lifestyle that you want? And he's able to staff his whole company with almost only part time people. He's got a lot of them. Uh, it's kind of interesting, but he's but he's he's. He's working on that, uh, that that generation thing that you're talking about there of of people that would rather spend five hours at the park today and then go to work for four. And maybe and, their moms or or everything, and but like that, that position I talked about, that's mm -hmm. huge. And I know everybody kind of takes it and is like, oh, whatever, it's just another person. No, you think about everything that you have in your mind as an owner and all the stuff that people tell you should be doing. Every time you go to a conference, you get off that conference, and you're like, oh my god, that's awesome! I'm so pumped up. Contracting mm -hmm. as a whole, as a contractors as a species, the number one problem I will say right now for all contractors is the ability to implement what they learn. Mm -hmm. And if that means that you have a doer of a person that you have hired to even just work part time to be able to take those ideas out of your mind and start working on them, you are one step closer because it's never always going to be you because you already have so much on your plate and it becomes a back burner item. And it slowly gets off the table because you forget about it. Then you come across it again. You're like, oh, I should have done that. Right. It happens all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. All right. Well, you know, just with all this stuff that we talked about today, uh, well, there, there was one other thing on my list. I know you, you mentioned it a little bit. You mentioned, you know, when we were talking about Google, about pay-per-click advertising. Um, but you and I had been talking a little bit about kind of some warnings there and, and what the industry and the market's been doing lately uh, on pay-per-click. And so what should our, what, what should our listeners be, be focusing on there and what should be they, they be aware of of what's to come uh, in the world of pay-per-click if that's the majority of their market source? Pay-per-click right now is becoming very, very, very competitive. So right now the entire industry um, in cities everywhere and everybody, I mean, I'm sure everybody listening has had this happen to a competitor or a drawer or themselves is in an acquisitions mode. So we are in a very heavy PE environment where we have so many different companies being bought up by conglomerates. And the thing is, is what happens is, is when they start streamlining a lot of these places, whether they're in big cities or whether they're in small cities, some of the instant solutions to the marketing that they plan out for these new partners is they have a like a mother load of cash that they can throw into things like paid and digital advertising. And so we're finding more and more and more with our clients who are not sold um, that you're getting into markets and you're getting into the bidding wars with these other companies and you can't compete because the oxygen is being drained out of the room when you have a private equity company backing your new, your competitor now that can spend easily $500,000 in pay-per-click advertising when you can't even scratch the surface with the $40,000 you have set aside for it. Right. And so it becomes this bidding war that people are, you know, the, the driving price of a lead now gets is skyrocketed. And mm -hmm. it's like, at that point, it's diminishing returns when you're talking about trying to compete in that space, because you're never going to have a pocket deep enough for it. You're never going to be able to get that much lead time back. Even when you're, when you're booking that, 
It's never going to happen. If you book one lead out of that and you're spending X amount of dollars on that much pay-per-click to be able to compete, I mean, you're going to have to upload your, up your costs. You're going to have to upload everything you're doing because it's just diminishing returns at that point. And you cannot, you can't tread water. And, and that's the biggest thing we're seeing. So we're always recommending our, our clients, especially when they're, we're looking at their market, we're looking at their comparables and all the different people that, and what the cost per click is that you look into other services. So like right now, AC repair and like furnace tune up and, and heating and stuff like that, heat pump, you know, all that kind of stuff is coming up right now, especially in some of those Southern markets we're getting into September. So it's going to be one of those things that kind of shifts a little bit, um, yep. especially in the Northern markets, it's going to be even bigger. And so what are services that you can compete in? What are keywords that you can buy? What are things that you can do that is that low hanging fruit that is not as competitive? You could pay easily, you know, $2,000 a click for AC repair in Atlanta. And right. yet I could probably go for water softeners, Atlanta, or what are those side services doing? Water heater installation or water heater inspection or new water heater. Um, what are you doing as far as air quality, IAQ stuff? And so the less fought after terms become some of the areas or the arenas that you can actually participate in with your budgets that nobody's fighting for. So yep. identify what those are and make those some of your targets rather than competing for those high level terms. Because again, the easiest customer to resell is your own. Right. Well, that's a good point. And I know back when we were running our home service business, uh, one of the most cost effective uh, advertising spaces for us to play in and to put our money that would give us the biggest return was actually duct cleaning. And, you know, I say that and then and somebody right then wanted to hang up and not listen anymore because they're like, I hate duct cleaning. Hate duct but, you know, yeah. man, we got so many customers for all of our other services, heating, air, electric and plumbing be off of a duct cleaning lead that was literally four or five times less money than the industry lead that that everybody else was buying and su and seeking after and so i i'm hearing i think i'm that's what i'm hearing from you colleen is is why do you want to compete when you don't have to there's things that you can do that can bring in other leads that still end the same results it's like if we got a lead for for duct cleaning uh we would go out there but we were still a heating and air conditioning company so we still ended up picking up the maintenance plan. We still ended up getting their, uh, you know, the blower pull and clean that day and the things like that, set them up for a spring service. And then from that point on, stickering everything in their home. And we were their AC company after that, Absolutely. you know? I just would recommend being, being objective. So if you're coming in and maybe you're doing your OPPC, own PPC, or maybe you're talking to your company, or maybe you're using a third party or something, ask the good questions, ask the pointed ones. How much is the cost per click on air conditioning searches and heating searches costing? What is the drive up price? What are the competitors in that circle right now? And what are other terms that we can purchase for other service that you're doing that you can actually play in? Um, don't exhaust your budget over something that you're never gonna be able to get the ROI out of. And realize that we're in a very tumultuous market when it comes to just stupid money being out there for stupid reasons. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that is great advice. Well, then, then as we begin to, to close this down, Colleen, well, tell me, just, just as a refresher, out of everything we talked about, are these things that online access can help our members do? Absolutely. So as far as, as, far as being able to help you with your paid services, if you want to have a critical look at what you're spending or your existing stuff, we can definitely take an objective look. I know that sounds weird if marketing companies say, hey, we'll take a look and tell you what you're doing wrong. It's not like that with us. Um, I, I know I can say that and sound completely fake, but the thing is, is we actually have a different uh, system. So we actually don't get paid for um, our services on PPC stuff unless you actually get the lead. And we quantify it for you and listen to the calls and everything like that and book it through. We can look at your service site and house call pro, all that kind of stuff. So our pricing is completely different. Our pricing for everything we offer is actually on our website. Um, when it comes to social media, we have a proactive package where we're giving you ideas and we're doing fully custom stuff and we're monitoring your page for those trolls and in those instances and doing reputation management. And so these are things that we do with you. And we do encourage you to have that point person in your office that we're sending a, a, a report to or a request to on the 15th month before saying, hey, we're posting for this, this, and this. Here's some topics we can post for. Is there any current ads you're running? And all you have to do is fill that out for us and be able to tell us, and guess what? We're going to be able to post what you're actually doing because we want to have that synergy. We're not just going to post random content that you're not actually running ads on right now. Um, right. 
Same thing with our website services. We already offer um, a redesign for all of our clients that we don't charge for redesign. Um, our website designs are super competitive and smart looking and we have a great graphics team. And one of the unique things about online access is value proposition is we actually upgrade our clients on a two-year basis constantly. And we do not charge for a website whole redesign. Um, if you want to get it sooner, you can, but like we have everybody on a, on a maintenance schedule, if you will, kind of like we talked about earlier to make sure that it is constantly being updated all the time. Okay, awesome. And what's the best way to uh, to reach online access? Because I know you guys own a whole bunch of different links to get to you. So <laughs> if if somebody said, "Hey, I want to I want to check out online access's websites," what's the easiest way to get to you? HVACwebsites.com. So www.hvacwebsites with an S dot com, and you can find all of our products, all of our pricing. I know, scary. All of our prices are on our website and our sign-up forms, and you can call in and talk to a real person. We have unbeatable customer support. I will put that out there in front of any other website company or marketing company out there. We have same-day return on any of the changes we're doing for people. You can talk to a real person, and we get all of our stuff done you know, in a timely manner. It doesn't take months or weeks, and you can always talk to a person. Awesome. Awesome. And Colleen, just again, I did want to say thank you for being a sponsor at Business Uncensored this year and a sponsor uh, and just a, a partner and a good friend to the new flat rate and, and helping all of our members. And for all of you listening, just, just remember, you know, the new flat rate, uh, you know, if you're not a new flat rate member, go check out the new flat rate.com and uh, check us out or, or give us a call uh, as well. The number will be on the screen here. Uh, but then also when, when you come on board, things like marketing, all these things that Colleen's talking about, um, we can build it into your pricing so you can afford it. If you don't think that, oh my gosh, uh, there's no way I can I, I can pay online access to redo this stuff because I'm already living paycheck to paycheck. Or if you're living paycheck to paycheck and you have some leads right now, then there's probably an issue with, with the pricing. And so we might need to have a conversation about that, about let's let's get these numbers where they need to be. And just, I don't know if any of you have noticed, I mean, Colleen, this goes to you as well, but um, just, you know, simple things like eggs and milk and cheese, they cost a lot more than they did before. Yes. And <laughs> gas, all of it, you know, it's all going up. Uh, and what that means is, is as, as a contractor, uh, and a business owner in general, we, we have to raise our prices as well, not because we want to, but because we have to in order to provide that amazing service that we've been talking about here today. And so if you are not set up with a marketing budget, then you need to reach out and talk to Colleen, talk to the people at Online Access about how much you need to be spending. And then pick up the phone and give us a call and we'll talk about what we have to change and adjust in your price book uh, to make sure that you can afford it uh, when that payment comes due. And, and nine so. times out of 10, we're going to just tell you about the new flat rate. Our company uses new flat rate. And as far as that's the number one thing we find when we do an exploratory call with our members is what is your pricing at? What are you doing to cover your costs? And it is so frustrating to know that we are not charging what we're worth as an industry. Mm-hmm. We see it all the time. Well, Colleen, any uh, other special words of wisdom for our uh, listeners today? Um, I can't wait to see you guys at Business Uncensored. Um, oh. <laughs> as far as words of wisdom, I would say ask the right questions. Um, don't just, you know, do your due diligence. I know that takes some time. And um, I know the, the biggest takeaway I always say is, is if you can find a person, find a part-time person, find somebody that's going to take pictures of your team, that's going to, you know, help run your social media or help you put them an email marketing newsletter together. Somebody has got to put that on their plate and make it their priority or it's never going to get done. Awesome. That's, that's great advice. Well, Colleen's information and numbers are coming up on the screen. Uh, be sure to reach out to online access and talk to them. And I'm, I know if Colleen's around and not on an airplane somewhere, she'll probably be happy <laughs> to talk to you as well. Uh, well, again, uh, Colleen, thank you so much for representing online access on the show today. And if there's ever anything we can do for you or any of your members, uh, be sure to let us know. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to know more about the new flat rate, go to tnfr.us. That's tnfr.us. If you want to learn more about online access, go to www.hvacwebsites.com 
That's HVAC website with an S dot com.